Hi everybody, and welcome back to episode 4, season 3 of the Scat and Track program brought to you by Vermont Fish and Wildlife. So today we're going to be focusing on our last species in the program, and that is the striped skunk. I think just about all of our viewers are familiar with a skunk. We've all smelt their, their smell that, that's, that's in the air after they have sprayed it. We'll talk a little bit more about that smell in a little bit and what exactly that means when we smell that. Uh, but primarily today, we're going to be focusing on the habitat of skunk. And remember, that's something we focus on every episode of this, because habitat is key to every species we have here in Vermont and maintaining those healthy habitats. Uh, and we'll also be talking a little bit about identification, and then we'll get right into how we're going to find signs of skunks in our neighborhood when we get out and go out on our walk uh, with your teacher or your guardian. Uh, so first off, identifying skunk. So, or striped skunk for that matter. So I'm sure we're all familiar with the striped skunk. And I have one, uh, a fur of one here in my hand. And they have a really good characteristic, and that is that white line that runs from their head all the way down their back. It makes that really defined stripe. The rest of their body is going to be black in coloration, and they're not very large either. So they're only going to be, even if their tail was fully spread out, uh, you're only looking at about a foot and a half or so in length. In terms of their habitat, though, we can find them in a wide range of habitats. Uh, so they're a highly adaptive critter. And what does that mean? Well, that means that I can find it not only in upland habitats, such as along a field edge or along the, these pines that are behind me, uh, but you can also find them in really uh, close uh, suburban habitats. So, right, if, I, if you're studying right now in Burlington, guarantee you, you have skunk, or striped skunk nearby. Uh, same with, let's say you're in uh, St. Albans or Newport, or wherever you are in Vermont, there's going to be skunk nearby. They're really highly adaptive. In fact, we talk a lot about the arrangement of the food, water, and shelter for these critters, and skunks only need to have water within a two-mile range of where they are. And that's a really fascinating thing. That means that they can be within two miles of water, and that works for them, whereas other critters need to be really close to their water source. Uh, a couple other things about skunk that you should know is they're extremely poor climbers, and they move very slow. So what does that mean? Well, without one key thing, they would be easy prey for a lot of species that are out there. But they have a defense mechanism, and I'm sure you know what that is. When a skunk sprays, they release a very potent smell that is actually used quite sparingly and only as a last resort because it can take them 10 to 14 days to replenish the gland uh, once it's emptied and they've sprayed. A really interesting fact about skunks is while they are solitary critters, they oftentimes during the winter months will be found denning up together. And what that means is they're not true hibernators either though. So during the winter months, if it gets really cold, skunks are known to actually den up for a time being, and they'll den up with other skunks, so whether it's male or females, and there'll be several skunks together, and that's the only time we'll really find them together. And they could be denning up in an abandoned building, um, a, bur a hollowed out log, whatever it may be. And that's their way of conserving body heat and staying warm. Other than that, the rest of the time of the year, uh, they're solitary critters. And again, they're not true hibernators, but when it gets really cold in the winter, uh, they will den up and conserve body heat by staying near other skunks. So the breeding period for our skunks are from February to March. And it's really common uh, for male skunks to actually mate with multiple females. The female, however, will choose to only mate with one male. After they have mated, the female is going to build a nest. And that nest is typically going to be either in an abandoned building, a hollowed out log, or even an abandoned den. And then in April to June, sometime in, the, in that period, uh, she's going to give birth to about six to seven uh, baby skunks. So when born, the young are born completely sightless, meaning they can't see at all, but they're covered in fur. And the mother 
is actually extremely protective of her young and will carry them around in her mouth. Uh, and then about in, around the fall, sometime between the fall and the spring, the young skunks are going to go off on their own. They'll be about the breeding age, and they will, go, they will go off and leave their mother. Now it's time to talk about the diet of skunks. So skunks are omnivores. And what's an omnivore? Well, omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. So the diet of skunks consists of insects, crickets, such as crickets, beetles, uh, but also small mammals, birds, uh, and then a lot of uh, plant matter as well. But we mentioned earlier that skunks are a really adaptive critter that we have in Vermont. And a very common place that we often find skunks is actually around our garbage. So I'm standing next to a dumpster right now, and that's not just because we happen to stand next to one. Uh, it's because skunks are really well known for going after garbage, because uh, it's a really easy, readily available food source. And like a lot of critters, they're going to want to put in minimal effort sometimes for, for their food. So if there is garbage readily available, uh, oftentimes that's going to attract skunks. Do we want them eating garbage? Absolutely not. There's plenty of other uh, wild foods out there for them uh, in the wild, uh, but it's really common that they'll get attracted to those type of food sources. So skunks are really abundant across Vermont. That said, their populations do fluctuate from year to year, and that's something we manage for. Uh, it's something we expect. And why would their populations fluctuate? A lot like any species. So they're going to fluctuate due to the climate, uh, as well as things as, so if there was a drought or something like that. Uh, but same with food sources. So if there's not enough available food uh, or increased predator, predation, things like that, we'll see their, their populations fluctuate a little bit. Uh, but populations of skunk in Vermont are extremely stable and they're very abundant. So now we're to the part of the episode where we're going to be talking about some of the signs of skunk that we're going to be encountering when we go out on our nature walk. And there's three main signs that we're going to be looking for. And the first isn't one that we're actually going to see. It's something we're going to smell. Uh, so we mentioned that when skunks are uh, being defensive, they often release an odor. And that's something we can smell. So if you're out there, I'm sure you've probably been driving down the road and smelled that smell before. Uh, you, just, you know it's a skunk. Uh, when you're out on a walk, it's very possible that you might smell that. Uh, the other types of sign that we're going to be looking for are, is going to be tracks and scat. So with our scat, I actually have some sample of scat right here in front of me. Nice little piece of uh, skunk scat. And if you're looking at it, you might recognize it if you have a cat at home. So skunk, skunk scat looks really similar to domesticated cat uh, scat, uh, meaning that it's very tubular in length. Uh, usually about a quarter to half an inch in diameter by about two to three inches in length. Uh, and you see right here you have kind of two pieces that were, were next to each other. Uh, but it can look really, really similar. And they'll put an image up of, of the skunk scat right on the screen for you to see. The next bit is going to be tracks. Well, what do our tr skunk, scat, or skunk tracks uh, look like? And the tracks, uh, the skunk are typically when they're walking, they tend to waddle. Uh, so they're waddlers, and their tracks are going to be your, the front uh, track is going to be a lot different than the rear. So regardless on both, you're going to see little dots that are actually kind of the claws that kind of come off. And they'll just look like little dots, uh, and they'll show a picture of that on the screen right there. Uh, but with the rear track, it looks a lot different than the front. So the rear actually has at the bottom a piece that's really rectangular. Uh, and kind of sideways. So it looks a lot different uh, than the, the front track. And you'll see that right on the screen right there. So one of the key things when we're looking for, for skunk is to understand that the, the front and the rear tracks look different. They don't look identical. And that is another thing that helps me to narrow it down in the species that I'm looking for. Uh, so really look for those, those distinguished dots that come off the tracks, as well as how that that rear paw is a little bit different with that kind of the rectangular that's right there. Uh, so now that we've talked about uh, what our, our scat and tracks look like, we're about to the point where it's time to you to go out with your teacher or your guardian and look for sign of skunk. Well, where are you gonna start uh, 
start your exercise or start uh, start looking for, for skunk? Well, you can start pretty much anywhere. So as we discussed, uh, skunk live in a wide range of different habitats. Uh, so whether you're looking in an upland habitat in kind of a, a rural setting, or if you're in more of an urban environment, uh, start looking on the edges of fields, uh, along oak stands, or even near a dumpster. Uh, there's a lot of different areas where you can find skunk sign, and the key to it is just getting out there and searching. Uh, this is our final episode of season three of our Scat and Track program. If you wish to learn more, you can find the, the links on our website or at vtfishandwildlife.com uh, to our previous season one and season two of the Scat and Track program. So if you wish to get out there and enhance your knowledge a little bit and cover some species that we focused on in the past, you can find those all on our website.